YouTube, we are in the top 16 of the Meta Weekly every single week by watching as long as you can. That greatly supports me, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that is great. And without further ado, Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. All right. And now the Sarama and the Yama are two cards that we could use the Magna Hut onto. We are going to be triggering the Sarama. You have to use it now because the Caesar would negate the Bahamut. So I do think using the Magna Hut to banish the Yama, that would be the better play. But taking Sarama out from the rest of the duel, that is also an option. So Sarama's better follow-up. Yama could be used as disruption. We're going with the Yama. I do agree with the Yama. Short-term Yama's a better banishment. Long-term Sarama would be ban better. It is a one of. Holy moly. What is our disruptions here? We have Caesar, double special summon negate. We have Rage, which could link with the special summon monster. We have Escape, which could pop any card in the field. And we have Abominable Unchained, which will summon from the deck to pop any card in the field non-targeting. Then we have Effect Veiler, and uh, that's our disruptions. Well, we could go into a Unicorn to spin a card also if there's enough cards in the field when we use the Unchained Rage. So it's about six to seven disruptions. Let's do it. Uh, we'll say six until the Unicorn summoned. We have Lubellion searching for Serenir. Alibur on summon, activate. Valor, negate. Now down to five disruptions here. Six if we use Unicorn. We'd have to discard the Phoenix Rhino. Well, we can't Unicorn and Abominable. So we're at five disruptions, five. Without the SP Little Knight, it, it, it's a lot of cards to be discarding. We're going into the Anguish. We're not going to Unicorn. That is leaving us with four more disruptions. Serenir banishing the Effect Veiler here. We're going to now be linking this up into Anaconda. Do we pop the Anaconda with the Escape of the Unchained? Serenir sending a branded opening. Branded opening can protect a fusion, not a link. Get popping. Now we have Caesar, Caesar, and Abominable from the deck. Oh my god, we're scooping it up. Caesar can negate the activation of branded fusion. You could then activate it again, but then Caesar can negate it again. And then the Abominable Unchained non-target pop that was coming with the Shavara pop the trap, summon Abominable, discard, get wiping. Very well done. Fusion Deployment Special Summon from the deck, our Cartesia. We have Branded Opening summoning our Alibur here. Getting the Cartesia out early makes us immune to Valor or Impermanent. So if we were to Valor Imperm, we chain Fuse around it. So we should not use Valor. That would be incorrect. And lost. Ooh, that's dirty. What the heck is that, mate? It's a side deck card in a no side deck tournament. This is being main decked because of Snake Eyes and it's searchable with Magna Hut as you just saw. Good thing Magna Hut is limited to one. If your opponent special summons a Link, you could then special summon this card. Then it has the ability of if your opponent activates an effect that would target a card on the field, a monster you control that is, you can negate the activation by discarding and destroying. So we may not have another card to discard. The other effect is per link monster on the field, we're gonna draw that many cards, then return back in the deck the amount of cards we drew. So uh, we will plus one. So it, even if you have no other card in your hand, on its summon, we're gonna plus one a card. So we'll draw two, return one, have a card to discard to negate an effect that targets. All right, I think you get the card now. Let's go. And we do have the Mirror Jade non-target monster banish. We have the ability to reborn the Mirror Jade after sending it to the graveyard with Cartesia for a double non-target monster banish. Let's see what we do. We have Fiendish Rhino being summoned from the deck. We're gonna non-target monster banish that Fiendish Rhino off the field here. Shivara gonna pop the trap to summon itself to then activate the chamber to summon from the deck of Shiyama. Shiyama's gonna non-target pop one of those back row cards. We're gonna chain Cartesia to get fusion summoning. Fusion Summon. Since it is Chain Link 2 being Fusion Summoned, the Branded Lost is missing the timing, not on the activation of Search, but the effect of protecting your, uh, them being able to respond to your effects. What are we popping? We're popping the Lost. 
So we pop the ability for them to search for a Mercurial, which would be a monster negate. We have the Gangrenol being triggered off of you summoning a monster through a monster effect. The Abomination Prism being destroyed, summoning from the deck an Abominable Unchained, discarding a card, non-target pop a card in the field. But we have Branded Opening in the Graveyard to protect ourselves from being destroyed if you were to destroy a fusion monster. Because our back row card could be non-target popped, we're gonna summon from the grave our Albion to then fuse with your field to make a Drago Stapelia. Interesting plays, we still have the Phantasme. Non-target pop in the Lubellion. Do we Phantasme? When do we do it? Do we wait? This is it, now. Yes, we do. We're gonna special summon the search for Phantasme. And then we're going to draw two, return a card back of the deck, so maybe we draw into a hand trap. Nope. And now if we activate to target an opponent's monster, the Phantasmia will negate. This was supposed to be for Snake Eyes, not Unchained. Pop in the escape, summon from the deck, Gangrenol being triggered. Or I incorrectly said Gangrenol is being triggered off a of monster special summon. That's happening now. It was instead triggering on its summon. Quem sending from the deck to the graveyard, and just like that, because we have an Albaz in the grave, we can reborn it whenever we want with the sent from the action deck to grave through the effect of Mirror Jade and non-target monster banish to summon the Albaz from the grave to discard and fuse with the opposing field. But what are we fusing with? We can't make another Mirror Jade. Do we play another Drago Stapel? We can't Drago Stapelia here. This is not a fusion monster. What are we making? We're making Lubellion. Lubellion into the... The dragon that pops, yeah? Borlord Furious is what I'm thinking. Borlord Furious. We are furious. Now the Rage cannot link with the opponent's field during your turn. It has to be during the opponent's turn. Shiyama popping the Aruha, triggering the Yama to reborn from the grave and summon a monster from the deck. We're summoning two bodies. Two body, two body. Summoning a Requiem. Now, Requiem is not good unless we have a Dark Contract in the graveyard. Otherwise, we can't pop a card in the field. Otherwise, we're gonna have to use it to make a Zeus. Get Zeus in, but isn't Zeus a machine? And I think we have the ability. This is a way to help you out against any deck here. You could type in the deck name Unchained. This is very important here. And you could type in the word Cannot Special Summon. And it will tell you what's locking you in. The Aruha says that you cannot special summon for the rest of the turn except fiend monsters. So we cannot even make the Zeus. So what the heck are we doing? Borlet Furious is gonna be popping it. We have Unchained Soul of Rage swinging in for battle. Now the Unchained Soul of Anguish is gonna be able to link off with the opponent's fields. The Dragostepelia is going to negate and it's continually negated. Now, we have to be hoping that there's something in the grave to trigger. Something that could trigger in the grave would be a Yama. We already used Yama, Yama was banished. So if this were to be destroyed by battle, it could reborn from the grave another card. Damn, very well done. Borlord Furious get popping, Drago Stapelia get negating. The Phantasme was a pretty cool card to be summoning there. Shibara pop the escape. That does not use up our normal summon. Escape summon for the deck, a Ruha. So what did I say about the Rakea locking you out of special summons? That it locks you out. So there's a very cool play that you could do where you activate Nibiru and then you chain Rakea. And then it says, if you activate the effect of Rakea, you cannot special summon a card like Nibiru. Now Nibiru will still tribute the field, but then stay in your hand to use again next turn. So you get to keep Nibiru, you get to tribute the field and keep Nibiru with a card like Rakea locking you out from summoning Nibiru. Now, if you Rakea first, you then can't activate Nibiru, but if you Nibiru then chain the Rakea, then you're good. So it's a cool way to recycle Nibiru. Sarama being special summon from the hand through the effect of the Aruha, and then the Rakea summoning from the hand the Shayama. As you can see, this was not good to draw the Sarama, draw the Shayama. We just lost two cards out of our hand, what we could have summoned from the deck. That is unfortunate. So we just minus two'd. Shiyama, pop the Sarama, summon from the grave, trigger Sarama, summon a Shavara. That's going to be our rank six exceeds. Double special summon, negate. Dark contract mate, grabbing the Requiem from the deck here. Now, what do we have here? We have the ability to negate double special summon, link with the special summon, pop any card in the field, 
and we could summon an Abominable Unchained to pop a card in the field, non-targeting. That's about five disruption. Can we play through five? Cartesia plus Super Poly. Can't negate Super Poly with the Caesar. Using with the Rage, so we just lost a disruption here. But we do have a way where we could potentially reborn it from the graveyard through the effect of Yama. And we're ending the turn. No disruption used whatsoever. The escape is not usable. It, so we can't escape anything. The Caesar would have to be able to negate, detach Shavara. Shavara could then set another trap for the deck, but still just linking off with that Unchained Soul of Rage was a really good way to break the field of disruption, making it so they could only use Caesar. All right, let's get to it. Dark Contract minus 1,000 Keck W. We got the Requiem set up with the Pendulum Scale to special summon itself onto the field. Now we're going to exceed this over into Machine X. We have the ability to pop any card in the field we will target. Activate, target our own back row. Only when popped while face down will it trigger to summon a monster from the deck. Yama being triggered to summon a monster from the grave. And Abominable Unchained is being triggered to special summon off of a card being destroyed. We have nothing to discard. The Yama is summoning the Shavara. The Escape is summoning another Shavara. Gangrenol is being triggered. Caesar is getting negating. Negate the ability to special summon. Negate. And what do we have here? We have 12,000. <laughs> Hold up, I lose. Well, wow. We have Unchained advancing to the top eight. I'm excited to see more matches from this mad lad, defeating Snake Eyes, defeating Branded. Can Unchained win the whole damn event? I hope so. Hajime. Wanted Seeker grabbing a Diablo Star. If we did a full no banless event with actually every card being usable, so we'd have to use something that's not Master Duel for that event. I think we all agree that Tier Lament would be the best deck in all of history. Even the first turn kill stuff. What do you think? Imperm, negate the Ash. Negate. No search, no special for the deck. Even though we're doing a no banless tournament, don't you kind of need a little bit of a banless on a no banless event? Otherwise, people could play three Graceful Charity, three Pot of Greed. What do we do with that? Do all banned cards, do we allow them, but only limited to one? Is that how we get around that? Wanted Seeker searching for a Diablo Star. Come to us. Ash on Summit activate, grabbing a Poplar. Boy, do we have a lot of hand traps here. Max C negate. We have four hand traps versus two ways to stop the hand traps. Finger the C, negate the finger. Now, what are the chances of Timeless playing a Ghost Bell in their deck to negate that Ghost Bell with? Probably unlikely, so we're screwed, right? No, you could use Cross Out Designate to negate the Max C still. So banish Max C, negate the Max C, just ignore the bell. Bro. So we're, we're okay. Maybe we didn't think about, we're just like, we don't play bell, so I guess we're screwed. <laughs> okay, grabbing the Divine Temple. Divine Temple set from the deck. Bonfire searching an Oak. And we are going to now be sending to the graveyard to special summon our Diablo Star. Yeah, I think they got confused by Bell. But we should have done what I was saying we should do. But because we held on to cross out designate, we can negate the ad. Uh... Okay. It is a mirror match. Because it's a mirror match, cross out designate could be saved for something better, right? Like a Nibiru as we're going for game. That's why. There you go. It makes sense. We played it perfect with Cross Out Designate. Negate, save it for Nibiru. Save it for something that would stop lethal damage. Let's go. Very well done. That was correct. Yep, good job. Otherwise, Cross Out Designate also negates anything that the opponent plays. You could negate an Ash, you could negate a Flame Burge because you're also playing those cards in your deck. Ash on summon, searching for our Poplar. The opponent has no hand traps whatsoever, so let's speed this on up. Let's do it. Very nicely done. Let's get to it. Let's do it. We have Borlo negate, Baron to Floor negate, Mascarina into an Apollo USA, negate, 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 negate. We have Promethean Princess, negate. We have our cards being untargetable. We have Valor, we have Ash. We also have Max C, so we'll just add until it's activated. 10, 
cards they have to worry about. Let's go. 10 disruptions and or obstacles. Oh boy. Good thing it wasn't 11. Lamberge summoning that Mascarina right here, right now by waiting for there to be a card in the field that plays around in permanence. Cross out, designate, negate the Flame Burge. Bore load, negate the negate. Negate. We're now down to nine. Nine. Nine disruptions. Baron de Flore, which will be untargetable here. Very nicely done. Mascarina does in fact get summoned. How do we play through nine things? I don't think we could do that. We're, uh, we don't have enough cards for that. Triggering Flame Burst to Reborn, triggering our Divine to summon our own Flame Burst from our back row onto the field here. Oak is gonna be adding the Pop Bar and the Graveyard back to our hand, which is the only way it is a legal activation. But then on the resolution, you could change your mind. You don't have to tell your opponent the intent of your Oak. It's only activatable because you could add to the hand, but you summon it instead on resolution. Now, Maxi has been used. We're now down to eight things we have to worry about. I mean, we continually have to worry about that Maxi. Formula Synchron being reborn, Mascarina, and then we now have the Oak and the Link Karibo summoning a body onto the field. Let's go. Apollo, 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 Baron de Floor, Valor, Ash, and Princess. Yup, eight disruptions and the Link Karibo protecting the Apollo USA. And we now have Nibiru. So we just went up from eight disruptions to now nine. Poplar Chainlink block and the Diablo Star from being negated by an Apollo USA, but Baylor does not care that your Chainlink blocked. We're going to negate. Borlord Baron and Apollo need to be the direct Chainlink to what we're negating. Now I just want to say, I'm not saying he could do this, but if you could summon a goddess here, Goddess can't be negated by Borload, can't be negated by Apollo, can't be negated by the Baron de Floor. The, the Goddess could get negated by Valor, which we now have used up. And the Goddess, not while not being negatable with the cards in the field, it then negates the Apollo, negates the Baron de Floor, negates the Borload. So if we could sneak out that Goddess, we could win. That, that's the way to win this. Ash, negate. We got seven disruptions. Goddess is the only way we could come out of this. Diablo Star going to zero attack off that link. What? You timed out? No. <laughs> what happened? They didn't say, just said nothing. Just, just lost the duel, didn't say anything. Okay. Maybe they actually just DC'd, I don't know. Let's hop another duel. Varys discard a hero to summon itself to then equip a vision hero into the back row from the deck. We have the increase. We have non-target pop a card in the field. We have mass change into a dark law, so any card sent to the grave is banished instead, which completely counters cards like Diablo Star and pop Bar can't be sent to the grave, Ash can't send to the grave. What else is good here? The favorite contact could summon from the extra deck, the Shining Wingman, which is gonna be able to pop cards on the field equal to the number of different attributes among monsters on the field. So that's pretty good. Let's go. Fenrir, open up Fenrir. Searching for the Unicorn. Didn't want to change some of the Dark Law because it would then be banished by the Fenrir. He didn't have Dark Law out early before the Diablo Star gets summoned, so it's able to send a card to the graveyard where otherwise it would not be able to. The original Sinful is not activatable if there's a Dark Law in the field. We're gonna use Favorite Contact. Returning back into the deck, our Infernal Rage and the Neos to summon the Neos Wingman. This could wipe how many cards in the field? Pop all three. At least three different attributes on the field to pop three cards. Let's get to it. We have birth now. We're now using mask change. I think maybe we should have summon dark law in response to the activation to search. They activate the search, you summon dark law, and then by adding a card, you trigger the dark law to randomly banish a card from the hand, which then triggers the unicorn to look at our extra deck, but at least it's not a Fenrir. We do have DPE to non-target pop the birth from summoning a Fenrir back in the field. Did we do that? Yes, we do. DPE non-target pop. Get popping. Wipe out that birth. 
Unicorn now being triggered, DPE triggering to summon from the graveyard during the next turn. Now, everything sent to the grave is banished for the opponent, but not for you. Divine set up into the back row, our Flame Burge. Original Sinful is going to be searching our deck, for, maybe for a Kurikara play we could do here, which would be able to tribute up the Dark Law and the Wingman. Get negated. As we then go for a draw, return back to the deck, drawing into a Unicorn, randomly banishing the Poplar from the hand. Bonfire searching our deck for Snake Eye Ash. And now we are truly popping off here as we grab the Poplar trigger, come forth in Special Summon. We're out of Disruption. We have Sunrise. If a hero is battled into, the Sunrise could pop a card in the field. But we could easily play around that, right? Uh-oh. Not good. Subversion pushing that Dark Loss. So now our cards are no longer being banished when sent to the grave. Oak gets searching. I misplayed with the early Neos Wingman. I should have Dark Lawed earlier. Okay. So Dark Law earlier, which we did commentate on the Diablo Star not being able to send a card to the graveyard if Dark Law was out. So that is one of our regrets here. We have Dark Charmer. But Ziad, your turn one, there was no mistakes made, right? We have Dark Reborning from the opponent's graveyard, Infernal. Infernal Divisor, come to me. We now have the Promethean Princess Reborn from the graveyard here. As we then further link this up into Amblo Whale. With Amblo Whale, we make Zelantis. Zelantis banishing the entire field, returning it back onto the field however we want, face down, face up, into defense. But they could not be summoned back onto the field as I guess they were not properly summoned, right? Could not be special summoned. The Sunrise. Why can't Sunrise be special summoned back onto the field? So the Wingman is improperly summoned. It was uh, it must be fusion summon. Okay, it cannot be special summoned back. The Sunrise. Oh, they both must be fusion summoned. Wow. They both have a special summoning restriction tied to the card. Thus, they were not resummonable. So I'm assuming the trap does properly summon it, which was not the reason why it couldn't be summoned. It's because they must be fusion summoned. Damn. Begin. Maxi and Nibiru. <laughs> we do not respect the Gamma. They're probably not playing Gamma. Come forth and summon from the deck. Let's go. We have our Shadow Mist. Shadow Mist searching for a mass change. I guess we just set an end. No, we're going to keep on cooking under Maxi a little bit. Banish from the graveyard, the vision, grab a polymerization. I don't think we're using it. Yep, zit. So Dark Law. Dark Law is gonna prevent the Diablo Star from even being summonable. Let's go. But we didn't summon it early. So Dia oh my gosh. Had we summoned Dark Law early, did we win? Uh, well, you know, the Poplar could have then get impermed. So I think we had to summon the Dark Law early. Damn, that is unfortunate. And now they have access to the subversion, which would have not been searchable through the Dark Law stop and the Diablo Star from being summoned. Poplar also being impermeable. And this also not activatable if there's a Dark Law on the field, but now there's a subversion to push it into the back row. Imperm, negate. The finger's got nothing to use it on, but the Link Kariba being the graver to dodge the impermanence. While this looks really bad, it still gets an Ash off the field. So the Ash is not able to summon from the deck an Oak or a Flame Burge. Poplar being triggered, come forth and summon, now making Promethean Princess. Triggering the Poplar, put itself into the back row of the Flame Burge, reborn from the graveyard, our Ash. Ash, which was sent to the graveyard by Link Haribo. Ash would not be activatable if there was a Dark Law on the field, but again, Subversion counters it. That's why we're not summoning it. Flamebirds also can't trigger in the graveyard if there's a Dark Law on the field because it would be banished instead. Promethean Princess would not be in the graveyard because Dark Law would banish it. Z Zelantis is not, it's just like, what can we do? What can we do? We had to shotgun the Dark Law in the draw phase. That was the only play. Yep. Reborning the field back, but face down. Triggering the Promethean Princess to pop one of the face down monsters. Come forth and reborn. Zelantis with over 8,000 damage in the field. Popping the one shadow mist, leaving up that back row mash change, which we know is there. 
This makes it so they cannot use a card like in permanence, just keeping that card in the field as we are going for that guaranteed lethal damage. And just like that, no mass change used due to subversion. Is subversion that good? It's only good because it's searchable. That's why it's so good. Ziad has some commentary. Ziad says, I was scared of that spell that pushed the Dark Law into the back row. That's why I didn't Dark Law early. So, uh, not to put you on the spotlight, uh, but let's, let's talk about that idea real quick. The idea of that, why we did not do it. So, subversion. And uh, this could be an idea for anyone else. Ish. Is it correct to be afraid of this card? I don't think it's correct to play around this unless it's under the context of them searching for this. Hard opening this, being afraid of that, I don't think is really correct because it's only played at one. So because Dark Law could stop Diablo Star from even searching this, I think it's more, uh, can we agree that with the three wanted and three Diablo Star, that it's better to stop her from being summoned than being afraid of them hard opening the subversion because she could search it anyway. And they know you can make a dark loss, so they're going to search it. Also, this being searchable with the poplar, but you have an impermanence to stop the poplar from this being searched. So I think because we had impermanence and the ability to summon dark law, I think that it was not just because we could see their hand. I, I just think it was more correct to get the dark law out early and just if they open this up then they opened it you know it's like what can we do there the it, it, we we have a way to stop diablo star we have a way to stop poplar from searching it i think we had to play into that but i appreciate it greatly i'm very happy that you did well with heroes enough to get in the top 16 that is incredible i hope to see more from you in more tournaments thank you very much let's go we have motorbike being discarded ash negate super heavy samurai Versus purely before the baby, nor that is. Let's go, let's go. We have the Peacemaker being normal summon to make our Scarecrow. We're going to discard Driver, reborn the Peacemaker. Peacemaker equip onto the Scarecrow. And this is where Ash would have been much better, but you can't usually Ash this as they'll most likely have a Baron to floor to negate the Ash, even though that is the ideal Ash. I guess that if you get negated that this could work out, right? Target a level seven or eight dragon in the graveyard special, summon it also for the rest of the turn. Okay, so it's a good way to reborn from the grave, but I don't think we use it. Masuwaru is here. We're just holding on to the Synchro Rumble. Now this is where it gets good. We're gonna be chaining a card before we're not able to activate any cards from our hand here. We need the Crimson Dragon on chain link one, or it will miss the timing on our newly summoned Banned in the OCG, Archfiend King Calamity. It's going to be chaining in response to the pure Lily that's activating here. We're also triggering the Masubaru to draw three. And now the King Calamity, you cannot chain to it. That's it. So we couldn't add any quick effects to this, only trigger effects here. You cannot activate any more cards on the field just like that. You could still attack, you could activate cards, their effects from the hand that is. Can't activate from the, you can activate from the graveyard. We can't play the My Friend purely onto the field. We can't activate Lily to perform an Xyz. We are going to be making a Dullahan get Swing in, protecting it from destruction by destroying another card instead. Ghost Rick Angel Mischief. Uh-huh. Into a Zeus. We cannot activate Zeus, but there's a Zeus to activate during the next turn. Let's go. Can't activate it, but now we can. We can activate it twice. Wipe up the entire field, dull a hand trigger, grab back the Ghost Archangel. It's gonna be adding it back into the extra deck as the Poplar equips in the back row. We have one more field wipe. Let's get to it. Wagon, we could wipe this before it searches, but we're instead battling. Nope, we're not, that was a joke. We're not doing anything. Huh, okay. Interesting, we still have a field wipe with Zeus. Lily activate grabbing the, I, wait. 
I cannot believe we we set up Archfiend King, King Calamity. Earl didn't scoop. Earl is instead gonna win? How? Oh gosh. Gera cannot activate the wagon because Super Heavy Sand. I mean, the TCG we probably would have activated. Nothing would have happened. But in Master Duel, Super Heavy Samurai is only in Master Duel. Cannot activate if you have a spell or trap card in the grave. Which is that Synchro Rumble. <laughs> the syn Synchro Rumble turns off Super Heavy Samurai. This is why Super Heavy can't play Cross Out, they can't play Call by the Grave because of that restriction. Damn. Yeah, uh, we got clapped up by the Synchro Rumble. I have not yet seen really why Synchro Rumble is being played. And uh, maybe we'll see it for game two or three. Let's hop. Uh, good Earl. Earl beating King Calamity. I think. We have data on the King Calamity, the win rate of Calamity of when it's summoned. 85% win rate when summoned. Earl is why this is not 100%. Ain't no way. It's the fourth best card on summon to win the duel when summoned. We have just one impermanence. Can one imperm help us? Grabbing a Peacemaker, which we already activated, but we're going to equip it to give it the other benefit. Why is this an attack position, though? Now, what is going on here? We have Regulus Negate, Baron to Floor Negate, Saratobi could pop a back row, which is great against my friend Purely on activation to search a card. You then pop it to stop it. We also have the Ash Blossom Negate, and the Peacemaker has a secret effect. While equipped onto a monster, your opponent cannot attack monsters you control. So it's an attack position to stop Zeus, right? That's why. So we don't want them to Zeus. And the card they could Zeus with, uh, yeah, you know, I guess that, that does stop Zeus. So anti-Zeus in attack position. Let's go. Lily gets searching for the Ma Friend purely. Saratobi is ready to pop it, but we want to wait. Now, we could stop the pop by using the Happy Memory to make it protected from destruction. Ash negate the ability to summon from the deck. We have three more disruption. We don't have the happy. No happy, no protect. Sartobi, destroy. MST does negate, as we saw right there. We still have Regulus. We still have Baron to floor. Everything in attack. So if you were to get another body, you cannot make that Zeus play that we learned from the previous game. Can't even attack into the elf, by the way, because the Saratobi is the only monster that you could swing into. Very well done. Let's take this into game three. Lily gets searching. We have Ghost Spell and DD Crow. DD Crow is really good against Lily. When Lily targets the card in the graveyard, that is when you're going to be DD Crowing. Pure Lee is going to be randomly grabbing a leap off the top of the deck here as we now make our newly special summon monsters on target while the turn they're special summoned. My friend Pure Lee guaranteeing a sleepy memory into our hand. Lily onto the, the delicious, which is when we drop that DD Crow. In response to the hard once per turn, Lily, so it cannot activate again. Banish, no exceed summon. Very well done. Now, we have triple tactics talent. Not looking at that hand. We're going for the draw too. Drawing into double hand trap here. As we now make Dullahan. Dullahan further linking up into Ghost Rick Angel. Angel is going to be activating to search our deck for a Ghost Rick spell or trap. The Ghost Rick shot. Now, shot is going to be negated by the bell as we are attempting to special summon a Ghost Rick from the graveyard. Negate. Now, what else can we do here? We have Sleepy Memory, discarding to summon a Purely, which is activatable more than once per turn. Come to us nothing as we end our turn on nothing besides an Ash and Impermanence. What well, is good? Not Gera's hand. This is not so good. We could Peacemaker summon from the deck, which Ash will negate, and then it is a GG. Oh my gosh. Let's see what we can do here. Making a Scarecrow. Okay, Scarecrow. Discard. Reborn Peacemaker. It, it, that was a good debate. I, I think that was a good debate. Just debate that. Try to uh, set up for our Peacemaker play here. We really need that Peacemaker to go through, but due to the Triple Tactics talent, drawing into Ash Blossom and the Impermanence, negate. We very much needed that to go through. 
It, all we have left now is a Veiler. Veiler against a purely street, meaning a newly special summon purely will be untargetable from the Veiler. Knowing that we're searching for a way to special summon, we can't even use Veiler on the special summon. We're scooping it up. And just like that, Gera and Earl GB, we have purely without Baby Nor advancing into the top eight. Let's go. We have Nadir Servant, which is newly semi-limited, grabbing a Maximus from our deck, sending Garura for that free draw one. We're locked out of our extra deck for the rest of the turn, but that's okay. We're gonna banish the Garura to summon Maximus. We're gonna chain Impulse to summon a monster from the deck in response to a monster activating on the field. Now, two monsters from both players' extra decks must be sent to the grave, your choice. We are sending our own Garura to draw into a Max C. We have Albion being triggered to grab a Banishment. We have the Titan Clad being triggered to summon a Quem. Quem on summon sending from the deck. We're gonna be chaining the Fire Engine to special summon a level four or lower Rescue Ace from the hand, hand, deck, or grave. I need a drink. Lifter on summon searching for a rescue. And let's go. <clears throat> Seeker in the draw phase, playing around the droll. Well, it's good. Bonfire grabbing an Ash from our deck here. As we now Ash into a Hydrant. Now, what are we doing with that Hydrant? Because we can't normal summon, but the field spell allows an additional summon. <clears throat> Additionally summoning, now the Hydrant, while you control another Rescue Ace, cannot be targeted by card effects. So if you use in permanence here, you're getting baited. No bait, grab the Turbulence. Ash is going to send itself plus another card to summon from the deck into a maxi in response to that effect, a special summon from the deck. This is where we have two choices. Do we go for a one turn kill play under maxi, which could be risky if they could stop our play, or do we stop early just on a few disruptions then end? We have Flamebirds pushing the Quem into the back row. Turbulence continually special summoning under that maxi. We've lost our damn mind. Turbulence could set up to four cards from the deck here, and Perm on the Turbulence is huge. We have to use it. Negate. No set from the deck. Then I think we're just going to be okay with this, right? We're going to actually threaten lethal damage. We have over 12,000 damage in the field as the Diablo Star grabs a Subversion, pushing the Maximus into the back row, which now drops us down to only 11,000 damage. Magna Hut, block the attack. Maxi, draw per special summon. You may be doing on my turn. Cross out, designate, negate the Maxi, which doesn't negate our own Maxi, which has already applied the lingering effect of drawing per special summon. No draw for you. Block the attack. We get reboosted up by the field spell. Search for a dragon during the end phase, if there will even be an end phase. Double the Bistial, blocking another attack. Now this drew a swarm when sent to the grave. will send a monster in the field to the grave. Send the Flamebirds to the grave. Oh no. We overcommitted into Max C, and we can't lethal. This is what we were worried about. Randomly drawing into a super polymerization. We have IP Mascarina main phase two. Let's get to it. We don't really have much disruption. We don't have Promethean Princess. We have no back row besides the Super Poly. Super Poly is our only disruption, actually. That's it. Get Fuse of the Fields by discarding Bonfire. Searching for a Serenir. When do we flip up that Super Poly here? Fire Engine triggering a Sun from the deck and Impulse, which is not Disruption. Lubellion is going to be setting up a Branded Spell and Trap card from the deck as the Serenir sends a Retribution from the deck to the Grave. Activating Branded and High Spirits to search our deck for an Albaz monster. Grabbing the Albion Shrouded to draw a card and send a card from the deck to the Grave. Getting Branded Fusion into the Grave to then add back to the hand. Now there's a problem because we can't super poly in response to a fusion summon due to the branded lost. So what do we do? Thrusting a harpy feather duster into our hand, forcing the activation of the super polymerization. First, we're gonna chain rescue to rescue the turbulence from the graveyard. And then super poly fuse with the fields. Now turbulence states if another card we control is destroyed, we could then destroy a card in the fields. Something like that. We have Moo Dragon making our cards untargetable from card effects. Let's read the Turbulence exactly. Turbulence should trigger here, shouldn't it? If another card you control leaves the field from an opponent's card effect, target one card in the field and destroy it. So we can 
activate right now to destroy the lost. Do we? We do. We do. Yes, we do. Mood Dragon declaring fire, so fire monsters will be untargetable for card effects. Can Branded break this field? Albaz on summon non target. Fuse with the untargetable Mood Dragon into Mirror Jade. For more non targeting shenanigans of non target monster banished, banishing the impulse off the fields. Now we're going to get Fusion with Branded Fusion. Send for the deck to summon an Albion. We could only control one Mirror Jade, so we cannot summon another copy here. Banish to Fusion Shokan into Borload Furious, which could pop any card in the field by popping one of our monsters. By popping the Cartesia, then chain fusing, we dodge the pop as the opponent's monster still gets popped. Shokan into a Gangrenol. So we're inching towards that lethal damage, but not quite there yet. Sending an Albion from the deck to the grave, taking control of the fire engine as we now have 11,000 lethal damage on the field. Who doubted Branded? Wow. Holy Branded. Chainlink blocking the Diablo Star from being negated by a card like Gamma. Let's set that up. I'm curious if the best way to play Rescue Ace is going to be summon an Elf, then summon Turbulence. Make the Turbulence untargetable from Veiler or Impermanence, and then activate the effect of Turbulence. I, I think we should probably try to prioritize that. And if anyone has good combos and plays to do that, I would like to maybe make a guide that includes Elf. Turbulence setting up to four cards from the deck. Polyo say, you know, could still get impermed though. So maybe Elf is still better. Imperm, Imperm. Flame Burge triggering to reborn from the graveyard. Princess is going to be reborning the Flame Burge. Flame Burge is going to put the Mascarina into the back row. Let's further link this up into a Sunlight Wolf as we then make an Apollo USA. Rescue Ace coming then? I already leaked that is coming. It's coming in three days. <laughs> It's coming quicker than you thought. It's coming. We have Alubur on summon negated by contain. Droplet to dodge the contain. Ain't no way. Do we negate the Apollo A? Yep. Apollo's three negates now down to zero. Contain negate nothing. We still have extinguish, which could pop a card in the field. And we still have the Promethean Princess. And we still have Mascarina. Mascarina into Unicorn, maybe? Or a Goddess? Branded Fusion. Let's go. Albion Sanctifier is untargetable. We're going to thrust a card into our hand, Harpy Feather Duster, to wipe out the Extinguish, which we can't use onto the Albion. And as I said, making an Underworld Goddess. We have Extinguish. We have the Princess. So do get ready for those two cards still. We have Triple Tactics Thrust. We also have, uh, oh, we have nothing on the Apollo. Alert. We're going to grab from the graveyard back to our hand, grabbing back our Turbulence. Goodbye to Extinguish. We now just have one Promethean Princess, and Goddess can negate the ability to Reborn from the Grave. So, you know, it's still kind of one disruption here. Oh, boy. Albaz, with a Branded Loss, could fuse with the field. Cartesia is fusing with the Albaz, making a Gangrenol. We already used up our normal summon, so we couldn't normal summon the Albaz. Triggering the Branded Lost to search our deck. Now, we can't use the Princess because it is in response to a fusion summon, which the Branded Lost stops. Grabbing an Albion, which we're going to be able to draw a card here. Send a card from the deck to the Grave Retribution to then randomly draw into a Cartesia special summoning it onto the field. We're going to use the Cartesia to pop, or I should say the Promethean Princess to pop that Cartesia. Triggering Gangrenol to summon from the deck or extra deck. We now have no more disruption besides the Goddess negating the ability to Reborn from the Grave. Coritis can reduce the entire field except the Goddess to zero attack. Get reducing. Branded in white, banishing from the Graveyard to make an Albion. We're getting that Mirror Jade ready. 
Now, Mirror Jade can't banish the goddess. How do we deal with the goddess? Mirror Jade is here. An interesting ruling may come up. Take out the princess. Non-target monster banish. We're going to chain Link Karibo so you can't banish our Snake Eye Ash. Okay. Do we banish the Link Karibo off here? Yes, we do. Link Karibo gone. So we could just battle into the Underworld Goddess. Otherwise, the other ruling would be it's unaffected unless it's targeted, but it's unaffected from activated effects. And the effect to wipe out the Goddess is not an activated effect. It's a lingering effect. Thus, the Goddess had two ways to die from battle or through the effect of Mirror Jade, but not the non-target monster banish effect because that, in fact, is an activated effect. All right. But the Mascarina is also another way that would protect it. So it's protected from the lingering effect that it's not protected from because it has the Mascarina, which protects it, which it was not protected. So it is protected, except from battle. Okay, we're good. Let's go. Seeker searching up our Diablo star. Do we have anything in the opposing graveyard that serves as disruption? We, in fact, do not. We are bare. We are open up for Snake Eyes to have their way. Let's do it. Subversion, push that Albion into the back row, setting up the HQ, which allows an additional summon. We're then gonna return four cards that are banished and or in the graveyard back in the deck to draw one. Get return and drawing into that impulse. Turbulence, setting it up back from the deck. Now, any one of these cards are activatable, the turn they are set, even though they're all quick play and traps because of the Hydrant. Sends the graveyard for our Black Witch, triggering the Flame Burst to reborn from the graveyard. Surely we have lethal damage from here. Now, if you think this is pretty good, this is only about to get way better when the new cards come out this Thursday. I'm really excited for Thursday's stream. It's gonna be ridiculous. Using the Hydrant effect of the Extinguish to get poppin'. I do really like that Mastodol shows that that's why it's being used as it did glow up. That was not in the game until I think in the past six months they added something like that to be viewable. Now with over 12,000 damage on the field, Rescue Ace without its new support, lethaling. Is this more Snake Eyes than Rescue Ace though? I'm really curious how Rescue Ace is going to be played with full power Snake Eyes, full power Rescue Ace. Macedal is going to be the first time we see both at full power. How do you feel about the new rule that says only eight summons per turn? How do I feel like if they were to implement a new rule that drops you to eight summons per turn? It's, it doesn't sound intuitive. It's a, uh, that's a bit convoluted. I don't know about that. Quam on summon sending from the deck to the graveyard. Albion, Cartesia is here. Have no fear as we fuse into the Gangrenal. Gangrenal sending from the deck a Serenir. Serenir activating to send a Retribution from the deck to the grave. Shrouded sending a Branded Fusion to then grab back with the Retribution. A good way to search it, but we've been waiting with that Ash Blossom. Do not let them eat your Ash. Save it for Branded Fusion which they unfortunately have a cross out designate for to negate the ash. Cross out, negate the ash blossom. Now, what do we have? Non-target monster banish for the mirror jade. We have Fuse into a Disruption, which triggers the loss to grab a Mercoria for another Disruption. We potentially have Quem to Reborn the Mirror Jade, but it's not for sure. So we have about three Disruption at the moment. Let's see what's good. If the Banishment fuses with the Mirror Jade, then that would be that extra Disruption. So we'll say three to four. Let's just say four. Let's go. Uh-oh, Super Poly. We have Diablo Star being added with the Wanted. I got to focus on the Super Poly messing up our disruptions here. Okay. Poplar being triggered to come forth and summon and search our deck. Gangrenol being triggered to summon onto the field. This was not counted as one of my disruptions. This is just extra. Coritus is not really disruption. It can reduce the field to zero attack though. Subversion onto the Mirror Jade is a problem for Mirror Jade. Nightmare Phoenix on summon, discard a card to pop a back row card, taking out the banishment, forcing its use. 
I think I incorrectly said banishment to be used with Mirror Jade. It would not send it to the graveyard. It would be banished, so it would not be rebornable at the Quem. So using banishment on Mirror Jade is not good when it comes to Quem. We're going to non-target monster banish with the Mirror Jade. Goodbye, Phoenix. As we reborn from the grave, using with the Mirror Jade, it's now gone into a Dragos Topelia. So now we just have Lost, which is not Disruption anymore because we don't have an Albaz monster. But we have a Dragos Topelia, which can negate. We just have Dragos Topelia. Yep, that's it. And we now have... We still have Dragos Topelia. All right. Come forth. Moo Dragon, which can't be targeted by the Dragos Topelia. Lamber is being triggered to Reborn from the Grave. When do we use our one negate and not only does it negate it turns the monster into a level one gone <laughs> nothing branded has been used up absolutely nothing on the field hand uh, no incorrect we have a rinbrum that snuck in the graveyard through the effect of mirji to reborn the albaz we have another disruption that secret disruption which then enables the Mer mercurier so we have one to two more disruption which just got fingered away. That two disruption, getting fingered, thus we have nothing. One finger stopping two. This is it for Branded. We had finger, we had super poly, we had, uh, you know, we had a lot. Turbulence in our hand here could banish two Rescue Ace cards, which we have just one, now two, with the Hydrant being linked off. Thank you for the Maximus. Quem's going to be reborning the Albion, which is not Disruption. But it then turns on the Mercurier, actually. Like, Brandon's like back and forth. Like, they're on, they're off, they're on, they're off. They now have a Disruption through Mercurier. We can negate. Rescue a card from the graveyard back onto the field. Turbulence is going to be banishing the Extinguish and the Rescue. It is not the same way Diablo Star is summoned. It does activate to summon, thus we can negate. And that's it. Now we're done. But they do not have lethal damage. So what is going on here? Because Rescue Ace is not ending on disruption. We have nothing. This is nothing. Absol- Bro, what just happened? You top decked a grass? And then surrendered? Bonfire it up. We have Maxi, we have Impermanence. Let's go. Ash on summon, Imperm, negate. We got the finger, but you can't finger the Impermanence. Also can't triple tactics talent. Finger and talent countered by Impermanence. That's just how good Imperm is. Had we Veilered, we not only would have fingered the Veiler, but we would have then looked at the hand or drawn two. Pot of E going for that draw to play. We have Ariana getting Veilered. Negate. We're going to finger. Speaking of the finger on Veiler, it's happening right here, right now. Just like that. Negated. Ariana's going to be grabbing likely a furniture card to discard the transaction rollback. Yes? All right. Now, before you activate the furniture card, you want to make sure the Ku Clock is physically in the graveyard to see. It has to witness the furniture card discarding in order to trigger. You can't chain the clock to the discard. It has to physically be in the graveyard, and then you can chain the furniture card to the clock as we're doing right now, getting the transaction roll back in the graveyard, but we are fingering something. We're fingering the chandelier. So we're not going to be able to set a new trap from the deck that would be activatable due to the Ku Clock. And uh, yeah, so we have Transaction Rollback that could copy just in Impermanence whenever we want at the cost of half of our life points, which is probably not worth it. Very well done. Set Imperm. We have double Imperm. We have Transaction Imperm plus Imperm in the back row, double Negate. Let's get to it. Diablo Star. Because we have two impermanence, we should just use it, right? Freely. Again, the triple tactics talent is dead. Imperm is way too good. Alpha is holding on to that max C, not allowing it. So we don't really have any plays, huh? We got to draw into a play. We got to draw into something good. Nibiru, max C, and clock. We are ending our turn. What the hell is that? 
We have Jet Synchron into Max C. We could make a Borload Savage Dragon, which will equip the Link Rebo for the Omni Negate. We're gonna look at the hand and go, oh, Nibiru, we do not care. Let's get swinging. 3,000 damage before committing. Oh, we're not gonna Borload? Really, just because of the Max C. Ash is now being set. This is really desperate for Snake Eye. Oh, I should say for Labyrinth, that is. Snake Eyes is doing kind of well. We're going to transaction rollback at the cost of half of our life points to negate Poplar. Negate. And we do remember that there's a Nibiru we left in the hand. We're going to summon number two. Poplar equip into the back row. Summon number three. Dark. Summon number four. We remember there's a Nibiru. Of course you remember. 1850 attack, 50 bigger than Ash's D. Lethal damage. Interesting. Interesting duel. I think the duel was one off of the finger. Fingering the chandelier, that was the huge choke point that changed everything. Choke him with the finger. Game two. Go for that draw to Maxi. Not so good against Labyrinth here. Ariana grabbing herself a clock. Discard with the clock. The clock physically sees the Torby discarding while it's in the graveyard. Thus, it will trigger to special summon itself onto the field or add back to the hand. Torby setting up the big welcome, which is activatable. The turn it's set due to the clock. Clock, trigger, but we are going to be activating Max C. So what we could do is I'm going to, with the effect of clock, not summon it, I'm gonna add it to the hand, and then I'm gonna chain the big welcome to the max C, so I summon before the max C resolves. You're not gonna draw anything off of max C. You don't have to tell them what you're doing. On resolution, you add or special. So in the TCG, they may say, I'm gonna special summon clock, and then they chain max C, which is also illegal because max C's banned, but it's the TCG, so maybe they, they don't know. And then they go, actually, I'm gonna add it to the hand, and that is a uh, legal uh, play, and then, you would have to then maybe the judge would have to figure out if they were actually trying to trick their opponent to activate Maxi early because you don't say that you're using the effect of special summon. You say that you're activating to add or special summon. So maybe you tricked your opponent into thinking you would special summon, then you changed your mind. Okay, we have Lovely returning back the Ariana, triggering Lovely to pop a card from the hand. And then we're gonna recycle the big welcome back onto the field. Yup, holy moly, we're getting clapped. Torby is a special summon, though. So we still at least special summon once under Maxi. Unfortunately, it wasn't a Chandelier. Chandelier would have added back to the hand instead. Boy, do we have a good field in Graveyard. We have the ability to trigger Lovely to pop a card in the field or in the hand. We have Daruma to flip the field face down. We have the Transaction Rollback to flip the field face down again. We have about three disruptions. Wanted Seeker, we are disrespecting the Gamma that they could potentially have by activating Maxi early. Is Gamma really worth playing around? What do y'all think? It's worth it until you lose once to it. We drew into an Ash off that Maxi, giving us another disruption. It's worth noting that you cannot chain monster effects to any of the trap activations. We're gonna take control of Lovely, but we're gonna return Lovely back to the hand instead. Okay. Yoink in the Torby. So we lose the lovely, we just have, we have double Daruma if we want. Daruma could send the dark to the grave. Boy, oh boy. We're just playing into that max C. Do, do we think we have game? There's no way we have game through Daruma. What is going on? There's no way you could win this. We're just going absolutely mad. Chandelier could set a trap from the deck, which will be activatable the turn it is set due to the clock, which will be triggered to summon itself onto the field. That trap is only activatable if the clock is on the field or another labyrinth monster that is. So if we could somehow get that clock off the field before that trap is activated, it will not be activatable. Still special summoning under Max C, we do not care. Flame Burst still special summoning under Max C. Daruma's going to be destroying everything. Our hopes and dreams, full field face down. Subversion's gonna force the activation of the welcome until we now have a lady. 
Now we're going to be chaining Lady to, to the Daruma to set a new trap from the deck, flip it all face down. Now, what's interesting about this is the clock, I believe, is not going to work now. It says that you can activate the card if you control Labyrinth Monster, which we don't because the whole field's face down. Flip, 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 flip. If the trap did not flip a card, then the player has to send to the Grave the Dark. Transaction rollback, copying the effect of Big Welcome to special summon a lovely, return back the clock, trigger the lovely to pop a card in the field, trigger the chandelier to add back to the hand. And now the Big Welcome, or I should say the Welcome Labyrinth is activatable. Yup, thanks to the clock. Now that we have a Labyrinth on the field, summoning a Butler from the deck. Now the, let's uh, go into this ruling real quick. If this link card is destroyed or is destroyed, okay, it wasn't destroyed, so that ruling doesn't even apply. But for two reasons, it does not activate. We have a ton of cards in the hand, activating to set up a Labyrinth Field spell here. Now in the activation of our big welcome, it's gonna get popping. We now have Chaos Angel on summon, banish any card on the field. We can make a Muckraker to then reborn it from the grave to banish another card in the field. With the Welcome Labyrinth and the Field Spell, it's going to be giving us the ability to non-target destroy any card on the field. We have the Ice Dragon Prison. In addition to that, come forth and summon from the deck, Lady. As we then get poppin', triggering the effect of Lovely to pop another card in the field or in the hand. Chandelier add back to the hand. Welcome Labyrinth set back onto the field as the Torby also resummons from the grave. If we have more than one Chaos Angel, it will of course be summonable. Double Chaos Angel is here. Do the Muckraker, yes? We're doing the Muckraker. We're doing it. Chaos Angel banish three times. <laughs> Scooping before the third banish. We can actually banish a fourth time. If we activate a non-Labyrinth trap, the field spell will reborn Chaos Angel to banish a fourth time. Wanted Seeker grabbing a Diablo Star. For some reason, the majority of myself streaming Duel Links, I didn't wear glasses when I needed it. I even went to Worlds without glasses. I don't know why I was opposed to using glasses. So I just had blurry eyesight always without glasses, and I just heavily relied on the pictures. Torby discarding Nibiru. You could activate Nibiru, then discard Nibiru. It will still tribute the whole field. We have Labyrinth, Labyrinth with our Welcome Labyrinth. Make sure the Labyrinth Field spell resolves first. Do not chain to the activation or you will not get popping. Now, it looks like a spell popped the monster, but uh, that was your eyes deceiving you. That did not happen. The trap definitely popped it, and only because the trap popped it does the lovely trigger to pop another card on the field or in the hand. Goodbye to the Nibiru, wiping out the Diablo Star, which will reborn back onto the field within the damage step. So we cannot chain Maxi to it, not that we should. Probably want to save Maxi for better timing. Reset up the regular Welcome, which, I mean, both these cards are gone, right? We Welcome, pop Monster, trigger Lovely, pop Back Row, then we're uh, solely reliant on the top deck, but maybe we should wait for the top deck. What's the best time to use this? Let's find out. Uh-oh, we got Ash to negate the Welcome. Oh! <laughs> I mean, we know there's a welcome there, right? Like, this is public knowledge that we lose our whole field? I think so. It's public knowledge. Resolution activate welcome. You have to. Bro, what are you doing? Stand by. This is your last chance to use it. If we enter the main phase, they're going to activate original sinful. And you're going to lose your play. Uh, yeah, he, you're right, you're right, you're right. Can't even ash the welcome anyway. But uh, in TCG, you probably could. So, we have to use this, right? Standby phase? <gasps> oh, there's still a Seeker. There's still a Seeker. Okay, there's still another card. There's still another card. That Seeker is so annoying. The additional draw, random... It's Ash again! <laughs> can't activate it because can't chain to a trap. Can't activate more than one Ash in a turn. Trigger the lovely. Pop the back row. That's it. Had we not been able to pop the back row, you know, pop the monster is also good, even better because whatever they draw into is gone, and we know the original Sinful cannot be used. Checkmate. That's it. Yeah, if it weren't for Wanted, yeah, you do want to pop the 
Diablo Star and the card in the hand. Well, the card in the hand could have been a Poplar, right? Poplar, trigger, equip, then original Sinful, send Poplar, and then doesn't Labyrinth lose to Pop Poplar? Oh my gosh. They could have lost. That's lucky, right? Goodbye, get poppin', open field. And just like that, let's trigger the Torby. Let's trigger the Ariana, which could summon the Lovely back from the hand onto the fields. We hate Lab and Lab players so much. Do you not believe in hate the game, not the players? You, you actually hate the players playing Labyrinth? You don't blame Konami, you hate the players? Very well done for Labyrinth. Let's hop in another match. Yeah, it's screaming. I guess the better question is, do you play pure Live Twin or Live Twin with Unchained? Because if it's Unchained or Live Twin Unchained, you play Unchained. But I don't know about the Live Twin question, that's different. Negate anything, negate a monster, flip a monster, trigger a fusion, negate a special summon, negate the graveyard, Baron to floor, negate anything, Fairytale snow, flip a card in the field face down, Mudora could stop fusion summoning, which is disruption in the mirror match. We're up to like nine disruption plus a cross out, which can negate any tier limit card that you have in your deck that I have in my deck. It's like 10 disruption plus the maxi. My toes are up, you can't see it. Yep, and is there anything else? Uh, we also have Keldo. Like 12, 12 disruption, 12. And we have the field spell, which is 13. 13, 13, 13. What the heck? <laughs> that's that's more than uh, Infernoble. What the hell was that? Okay, good job. This time Archer gets to go first. And again, the opposing player has zero disruption. Negate a special summon, negate anything, banish a face up, graveyard turned off, negate anything, and trigger field spell to pop a card. It's about like six disruptions. Snow is maybe gonna turn into seven if we get enough cards and get her into the grave. Let's go. Six to seven. <laughs> Maxi draw for turn. Our, we are still on the copium of master rule six where the turn two player opens up with six cards in their hand, but don't draw for the turn, similarly to how the turn one player does not draw for their turn where they used to. And then we would have been able to max see this. Heart beat is going for that back row card. We're gonna lose our crime, but resolve our dweller. Now your shadow beast will not be able to activate being sent to the grave. We got Fenrir on attack, not activating because the Baron to floor would negate. The clown is being triggered but the Fenrir does not trigger in the damage step, but we also would not want to trigger it because as we said, the Baron to floor. We are now making a Time Thief Redoer, which could send the Fairytale Snow to the graveyard. Fenrir on attack, banish, open up the field for lethal damage, just like that. Game three. Very nice. I'm curious how similar their deck lists are. The clown, the clown was putting in some work there. We clowning. Tear Lament Scream. I have a sneaking suspicion that there's only one person that's in charge of the entire balancing of Master Duel. We are going to Tear Lament Cash Tira, banish a Scream from the hand, trigger the Scream, get Millen. This also chain link blocks a Hovness if they were to have one in the hand. Very nicely done. We could flip a card in the field face down, then trigger a fusion, which will trigger the field spell to pop and trigger the collider to spin. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go. And then the fusion itself will be a disruption likely. You can't super poly Kaleido. impossible. We did not get to Dweller because turn player priority with the toggle on 
allowed us to activate Super Poly before the Dweller could even do a thing. Trigger the Scream, trigger the Tier Living Cash Tier, that's a mil 5. With the mil 5, do we trigger a Fusion? Sharon, trigger Fusion. Let's go. Crime, recycle the Rhino Heart back to the hand. Sharon is going to be stopped by the Keldo. Keldo says no to your Fusion Summon and also returning your Fairytale Snow back in the deck. This is big. This is a big problem. The meta noise, if we can't target their monster because of the Moo Dragon, how are we going to trigger the Field Spell? How are we going to trigger the Kaleido Heart? We could do so with maybe a Heartbeat discard, but that's not triggering because we don't have another card to discard for the Rhino Heart to be summoned. The Moo Dragon may be a checkmate. Uh-oh. Sandy Trivikarma, which is essentially a terraforming, grabbing our Tier Limit Field Spell, carefully making ourselves dark. Dark monsters cannot be targeted. Heartbeat, spin the opposing field spell back in the deck, discard the Rhino with no card to discard to Reborn. Sharon is dark. The clown is light. Do we meta noise? Flip the clown. I think this is our opportunity. Yep. Flip that clown, send the Hobness, and get trigger in like crazy. Let's do it. Was, is clown mandatory? Was that a mistake? Was that an oopsie doopsie? If this card is sent, you can optionally summon and play into the meta noise into a window, into the field spell. Yeah. Time Thief Redoer. Get redoing. And you can't special summon more than once per turn due to the window that is applied to both players. We're going to be triggering the Sharon. Get Fusion Summoning into Dragostepelia. That is our one Fusion Summon. Okay. Kel uh, we'll just battle over you. That's fine. Uh, thanks to the Scream and our Field Spell, but boost. Keldo activatable on the field to stop a potential Fusion Summon there. We have Time Thief for Doer, which could steal a good card off the top of the deck. No, Ash is not a good card off the top of the deck. To battle we go. Keldo early is going to be spinning. Three cards from both players' graveyards back of the deck, triggering the field spell to pop the Time Thief within the battle phase as we have already committed to that phase. It just like that. Very well done. Tier Limit versus Tier Limit. Game three was a bit cooler because it lasted beyond turn two. Very nicely done. We are bonfiring Poplar into our hand. Activate, come forth, and summon. Let's get to it. Torby discarding the Ariana, setting up a big welcome. Let's get to it. Where is our Flame Burge? Well, we're going to have to wait for a summon to trigger the Divine Temple to summon that Flame Burge onto the field. Starting off with our Cash Tira Field Spell. Max, see it up. All right. Come to us, Fenrir. Fenrir special summon here. Triggering that Divine Temple and using the Sprite Elf. Now the Fenrir will be able to banish a card, but we can't target the formula. We can't target the Mascarina, but we can target the Flame Burge, but we're still not going to use that because then they would chain to us targeting it with the Formula Synchro on a Synchro with it. We're going to chain Big Welcome. Returning the Fenrir back to the hand. Get that lovely out before the Baron de Floor is here. And then we're going to trigger the lovely so what happens here is you could, in a way, maybe safely activate the Lovely if you think your opponent's not going to activate Flame Burge. Flame Burge will be Chain Link 2, Lovely will be Chain Link 1. If you activate Lovely and they pass on Flame Burge, they could then Baron to Floor, but then you got them to not activate Flame Burge. Is that worth it? Let's find out. Woo! What are you going to do? Even better, we have Torbia to chain link block it, so it's not even an issue with the Flame Burge. Very nicely done. Torbi trigger block it, so now it's it's not even a question of do we use Baron to Florida to negate the Torbi? Of course we don't, but if it weren't for Torbi, we'd have to choose. It will only ask you to Flame Burge. It's not going to say Baron to Floor Flame Burge. It will say, do you want a Flame Burge? You have to say no. Then it will say, would you like to Baron to Floor? 
Oak get reborning. Ash get searching. Poplar get triggering. Come forth and summon itself onto the field. This is one of the crazy aspects of Snake Eyes is having an incredible follow-up and just being able to build up a wall of tiny little monsters to ensure they don't lose that turn. Apollo USA. Quadra negate. Should this card be allowed? Negate the lovely labyrinth. We're going to chain Tier Limit Cash Tira since you cannot negate again within the same chain. Come forth and summon, banishing the Fenrir, which we had returned back to our hand. On summon triggering to Mill. Now, why are we playing Mill with Labyrinth? Labyrinth loves their cards in the graveyard. They have a ton of cards that trigger from the grave. They have the transaction rollback, which is usable in the grave. This is actually some good synergy. Goodbye to the lovely through the Promethean Princess, milling from the top of our deck. Nothing too good. Because our mill sucked, we scoop. I think if we maybe milled a transaction rollback, we could have still been in the game. Oh, uh, I think I did that. I did that. I actually also did that with Gia. I kind of set that up with Gia too. We kept on resetting until she had max C. I think I was playing Dragon Link on the early release of Master Duel. I wanted her to max C me and then I still beat her. All right, let's go. What do we have here? We have big welcome, spin back Rhino, pop a card from the hand. We have impermanent gate. We could discard whatever card we add back to the hand, which would be usable with the super poly here. Let's get to it. Ooh, we're afraid of, uh, afraid of uh, evenly matched. <laughs> we're baiting evenly matched. Activate, pop a random card in the opponent's hand. Imperm, negate. Justinian really thinks that he's about to get evenly matched. We're gonna be fingering the Torby. I, I don't beat my sister for fun offline. Okay, chill. And then uh, we're gonna find out that there's uh, nothing. I mean, weren't we just trying to bait something like Gamma, but then the chain link block happened? Do we? Torby block the lovely has been so relevant. We wanted to, I think, Gamma the lovely. Was it? I, okay, yeah, it, the problem is if we don't actually negate the lovely, if we negate the Torby, the lovely then pops our Gamma or the other card, it kind of like screws us up. Do we even have a level eight synchro play here? We don't really. Okay. Rhino, Heart, Baylor, Negate. We could chain Super Poly if this were fusible to dodge the effect Baylor play. Still holding on to that Gamma. Do we Gamma pop Lovely on the activation to set a trap from the graveyard? Negate! Back to the hand. So she does not get destroyed. She is still negated, and that triggers the Torby if we had one in the graveyard, which we don't, but we could discard Lovely with the Chandelier now. Okay. Giving us a card at discard to set up a big welcome. Makes sense. It worked. That was commendable. Nicely done. So understanding how a card effect that destroys would not destroy if the card leaves where it was so it does not get destroyed. Imperm negate that Ash as we do not have a Link Rebo to dodge that negate. Very simply winning this duel. Tier Limit, Labyrinth. I'm really excited to see Justinian's D on how he plays this deck. Hopefully he wins game three. I'm not rooting for the player. I'm rooting for the deck. Duber, I, I like you, but I like the, the Justinian's D more. Bonfire get searching. Grabbing a Poplar. Poplar get triggering. Special summon itself onto the field. We got big welcome plus the transaction rollback in the graveyard flame. We got the flame burst summoning the IP mask arena in response to the Sharon activating. We are going to now synchro into Baron to floor. Let's get to it. Sharon's going to mill three. Are we triggering a fusion play here? Let's see the graveyard being sent to the grave. Hobness is being triggered. Flame burst dragon chain link blocking the Hobness from being negated. We also have big welcome labyrinth, which is going to be negated by the Baron to floor. Negate. 
as we now fuse in the Kit Cal will be summon number two. Five summons we do get in Nibirud. Summon, summon, get ready for the IP Mascarina going into the Quadra Negate Apollo USA. Moo Dragon, not Kit Cal. Okay. Moo Dragon is here. Summon number three. Our, we can't Zeus the fields. There's no way. What can we really even do? We Moo Dragon, make our monster untargetable, then make plays with grief and reinforcing the army, maybe? Uh, I'm sorry, I thought this was my turn, Snake Eyes. This is ridiculous. You know that Snake Eyes met the requirement for Nibiru before the opponent? When it's not their turn? If Justinian had Nibiru, they could Nibiru? Okay, there goes Moo Dragon. Come forth. Negate the Sharon. Not that that's negating anything. Oh my gosh. Okay, finally. Let's make plays. Grab the Rhino Heart. We do have the Baron to Floor activatable. So is the Veiler to negate. Not using either. Wait, we already used the Baron to Floor negate? We did. So we just have Veiler. Now we're going to use Transaction Rollback, copying the Big Welcome Labyrinth to summon Lovely. Why couldn't the Underworld Goddess negate? Does she negate only the activation of cards and not the effect? It states that if you were to special summon a card, you can negate the activation. To activate a card or effect, Oh, you can't negate transaction rollback because its effect is to copy. Its effect is not to summon from the grave. But if there was a big welcome on the field, the underworld goddess could negate. So really good ruling there for Labyrinth that plays around the goddess. All right, we're now going to fusion summon. It doesn't matter if you're summoning from the deck. You could summon from the grave. Ghost spell can negate the big welcome and goddess can also. Lovely trigger, get popping, chain link blocking. Kid Cal is gonna be searching. Chandelier get tr I really wanna play this deck. Oh my gosh. Promethean Princess triggering from the grave. Baylor also negating the Kit Cal, negating multiple effects here. The effect to search, the effect to send to the grave, then mill to then also reborn. That's huge. Goodbye, Lovely, before she was able to activate the effect to return a card in the graveyard back onto the fields. Can I show the list after the game? It's gonna be on the website, don't worry. Randomly popping an ash in the hand. Grief summoned from the deck or grave. Negate. Goddess is crazy. Oh my goddess. Goodbye to the elf. Sharon and the kick caller making a uh, muckraker. Okay, muckraker. Reborn lovely from the graveyard. Goddess already used up its negate. Triggering Divine Temple to summon a Snake Eyes Flame Burst. Lovely recycling the big welcome into the back row. Goddess cannot negate Big Welcome. Why didn't we try to Big Welcome? Because you can't chain Goddess to Big Welcome if there's a Lovely on the field. We still would have lost, but I mean, we could have uh, tried something, right? Uh, I mean, it was hopeful, hopeless, hopeless. Thank you for watching the top 16. I greatly appreciate you watching this long. Thank you very much. Let's go.